Last time, we saw an RF dongle as a peripheral device. Today, we have SP32 dev kit with us and we will set it up as a Bluetooth peripheral device. Similar to last time, we will be using an RF Connect app on our mobile device, but no more Hercules terminal needed this time. As we will be using ESP based logging method and display it on ESP IDF terminal in VS Code itself. If you are new to ESP32 based ESP IDF environment, do check out our video on this topic in the top right corner. Namaste and welcome to Avinashi Tech. Let's open VS Code and then ESP Projects directory. In the terminal window, currently PowerShell is active, so we will hit that expressive icon and select Open ESP IDF Terminal option. Alright, let's start. First, we will create a project using command create project and we will name this example as ESP32 underscore BLE underscore peripheral. After creating this project, we will have our basic CMake files and an empty main source file available with us. Now, let's open configuration GUI using command menu config and make some changes to our configuration files. Moving to the last option, component config, we will select option Bluetooth and enable it. Now, under host, we will select NIMBLE instead of BlueDroid. For the unversed, this here are options of Bluetooth stack for development. BlueDroid also supports classic Bluetooth but needs more space on the flash memory. Contrary to that, NIMBLE is fast, takes less space and is only available for BLE or Bluetooth low energy. Make sure the controller option is enabled. Under NIMBLE options, we will select our device to be in peripheral role. You can keep the security features if you need, but I won't be using it in this example. Let's update default device name like last time to our channel's name. Leave all other options to their default. Finally. Press button S on your keyboard and hit enter to save this configuration. Use escape button to exit. Back to our project folder, a new SDK config file is ready for us. You may have a look at the updated configuration under Bluetooth section. Okay, let's move to our code part now. In the beginning, as usual, we have headers related to usual operations, Bluetooth stack, logging operation, and for our LED GPIO. Then we have declared LED GPIO pin and time period for a particular on or off state of LED. Following that, we have Bluetooth service and characteristic 128-bit UUID. So we have kept the same ID like last example on an RF dongle. After this, we have some function declaration, gate service initialization function, along with a callback for characteristic when it's accessed. Some variables are declared as well, connection and attribute related handle, variable to track LED status, and also flag that states when notification is enabled. Next up, we have our service and characteristic setup. We mention our respective UUID here and assign notify flag to our characteristic. Notice we end up with UUID and type as zero in structure initialization to indicate end of characteristic and service respectively. Also, we have not added any CCCD descriptor as it is automatically invoked on adding a notify based flag. Next, we have our advertising event related callback. First one amongst that in which we are interested in 
is a connect event. If we are unable to connect due to some reason, we advertise again. If we connect successfully, we deploy a serial based message with connection details like peer address, role and some connection related info like last time. Then we have a disconnect event wherein we log the reason for disconnection and also resume advertising. A notify TX event is called on successful notification of message to the client, though we already know that there is no acknowledgement in notification. We simply log a message with the address of the peer. Lastly, a subscription enable disable event where we display our connection and attribute handle as well as update our flag responsible for sending notifications. Like mentioned earlier, we have an access callback for characteristic. Well, I started first without it and I don't know why but I couldn't see my complete service on the app. So I had to add it. There's just nothing here but just logs a message. We have our main advertise function. Here, we mention what data we need to be in the main advertising data field or scan response data field. Similar to last example, we will have our device name in the main advertising data and our service UUID in scan response data so that you can identify the service without even connecting to device. Maybe even add some filter. BR underscore EDR unsub says only VLE option is available and no classic Bluetooth. After setting these fields, we start advertising. Then we have on sync and on reset function which are associated with the NIMBLE stack. The first callback function is called once host and controller are in sync with each other while the second and controller is reset with the reason responsible. This is then followed by our main BLE host task. So basically NIMBLE is an open source stack which was first developed for Apache Minute RTOS. The idea was to replace soft device stack of NRF controllers. So soft device Bluetooth stack is the proprietary software from Nordic and it is what is being used in NRF Connect SDK along with Zephyr RTOS. But NIMBLE has been successfully ported to other RTOS environment as well like FreeRTOS which is used in ESP IDF environment. So we are lucky I guess. You can read more about this and I'll even provide a link to it in the description. Back to our code. So this task if stopped will call the dinit function and free task resources. Okay. Get service init function. This basically initializes the basic gap and get service first and then adds custom service which was provided by us in the beginning. Next up we have basic LED output and configuration function. Lastly, we have our main application function. Here we define a buffer which will carry the message to be sent via notification first. And then we start to initialize NVS flash partition. After that we move on to initialize NIMBLE stack. Next we will register callback function needed for sync and reset. Finally after calling our get service init function and configuring LED GPIO we will start our BLE host task. After that in the while loop we toggle our GPIO LED and we identify the LED status. Fill up our buffer with message according to the LED state. Then we check if our flag is enabled and if it is, we first convert our data buffer into something known as mbuff. Why we do that? Because our main notify custom function tends to parse the data in this format. We also pass connection and attribute. So all of this is repeated once in a while after a certain delay. We have kept one second for that. So on and off. 
for one second each. Great. Let's go to ESP IDF terminal again and after locating our project directory, start with the build command. Once we have the build files with us, we are ready to connect our device and upload the code. We will be using p for port command with our com port com6 here and then the flash command. After pressing boot button on my dev kit, the code is finally uploaded. Cool. Now it's time to enter the monitor command after selecting the correct com port. So our device has a blinking LED and as per the logs, it is also advertising Bluetooth data. Let me get my mobile device with the NRF Connect app installed on it. Allow permissions to this app and yes, there it is, our device, Avinashi Tech. You can look at the service UUID displayed here and yes, notice the order of bytes reverse to what we had in the code. Stack based and DNS playing a role here. Anyway, if you click on more, you can get a bit of more connection info. All right, let's hit that connect button. Once connected, we will see the related log messages on our terminal window that we opened using monitor command. Okay, now clicking on the service and enabling the notification, we are receiving the LED status. You can see the serial messages for the same. Okay, now look at the message on the app. It's in ASCII format. So let me just open ASCII table and for LED space on message, we have 0 hex 4 C, 0 hex 6 5, 0 hex 6 4, 0 hex 2 0, 0 hex 4 F, 0 hex 4 E. For the message LED space off, we have 0 hex 4 C, 6 5, 6 4, 2 0, 4 F, 4 6, 4 6. Let us disable the notification. Okay, so we have stopped receiving data. Let's now disconnect the device. There you go. We have the disconnected message along with the reason. All right, so this is it for this video. Hope it was helpful. If you have not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button and feel free to like and share this video. Signing off.